Shalom. I want to start off by saying, Kal Halal Yamla, Yahweh, Basham, Yahushai, Basham, Raka Kodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for teaching us the truth and who rule well. Peace and citations unto the Akim that is spread around the four corners of the earth, spreading this word in sincerity and in truth. Shalom to the whole for elect. I'm the brother Kotas of Zion from the James Holland branch, coming back through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Basham, Yahushai, with another lesson, with another video. And Lord willing, this video is edifying. Gone. So in this lesson, I want to go into the song of Moses. That's from Revelation 15, verse 3. But I'm going to start at verse 1. This is Revelation 15, verse 1. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and the sea of glass that represents the firmament and mingled with fire, the mingled with fire, that's the fire from the intercontinental ballistic missiles. And them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name. And, you know, the number of his name is speaking about Esau, Esau's name, the number of Esau's name, which is um, two, three, it's like, yeah, uh, 666. 666, which is two score, so like, yeah, um, let me just go to the first, is uh, Revelation 13, verse 18, here is wisdom, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is a number of a man, which the, that man is Esau, the so-called white man, and his number is 603 score and six, gone. So going back, verse 2, And them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image, which is his philosophies, you know, uh, the, the um, alphabet crew, you know, putting everything upside down, uh, idolatry, um, homosexuality, you know, all these things that he's pushing that is against Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. That's the image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass. Which the sea of glass is the firmament, having the harps of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai. Verse 3, And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, and, song, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord Yahweh Almighty, just and true are thy ways. Thou King of Saints. Go on. So this is referencing the song that uh, Moses also sang. You know, uh, that the Israelites sang in the time of Moses that he lived. So uh, we're going to go to that in Exodus 15. Verse 1, and it reads, Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto Yahweh, and spake, saying, I will sing unto Yahweh, for he had triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider had he thrown into the sea. And who was the horse and the rider? That was the Pharaoh, Pharaoh and his army, you know. Yahweh is my strength and song, and he is become my salvation. He is my power, and I will prepare him an habitation. My father, Yahweh, and I will exalt him. Come on. So that's that song of Moses, you know, that the horse and the rider, Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, has destroyed. And the same thing we're going to sing again, you know, when we are going to be saved out of the grasp of this so-called white man, the Edomite, you know, because he is the, 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 the rider on that horse right now. He has been given dominion. He has been given this world. <clears throat> to rule so let's go to let me see real quick revelation revelation 6 
ก่อนนี่คือ Revelation 6 verse 3 And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, "Come and see." And there went out another horse that was red, and which uh, Esau. That represents Esau because Esau is red, you know. a d a w a m means red. You see. And power was given to him. That said, thereon to take peace from the earth, and that's what he's doing right now. He's rape robbing and murdering all across the earth, and that they shall kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword, and that's uh, the blessing of Esau, the sword. That's what Esau, his forefather, got as a blessing. You see, so Esau is that 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 horse and rider in this day and age. You see. Let's go to Zechariah. Zechariah ten, verse five. And it reads, "And they shall be as mighty men, which tread down their enemies in the mire of the street in the battle, and they shall fight." Because Yahweh is with them, so Yahweh is going to be with us. Yahweh b a s h e m y a h w a s h a i is going to be fighting with us, with the Israelites, the so-called Blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans. And the riders on horses shall be confounded, and that represents Esau and his armies. You know, they are going to be confounded in this battle, in this fight, because the Most High, He's a man of war. He likes a good fight, but still, they are going to be. Destroyed, utterly destroyed, by who? By the Israelites. For six, and I will strengthen the house of Judah, which Judah is the head tribe of the southern uh, kingdom, and I will save the house of Joseph. And Joseph is synonymous for the northern kingdom, the northern tribes. And I will bring them again to place them, for I have mercy upon them. And they shall be as though I had not cast them off, for I am Yahweh their power, and will hear them. You see, so the Most High He's going to join Judah, and He's going to join Judah and Joseph, which Joseph is then synonymous, is equal to Ephraim. You know, so He's going to join these two kingdoms, and we are going to fight together, and the Most High is going to hear us. You see. Let me do it in a different app. I see. Ah, uh, Isaiah nineteen, verse nineteen. In that day shall there be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt, and a pillar at the border thereof, to the Most High. So the altar, the altar is represents the camps. You know, in the midst of the land of Egypt, and Egypt stands for captivity. So, the Most High is going to see the camps in the lands of their captivity. You know, in America, Babylon the Great, here in Europe, in London, in Australia, in uh, the continent of Africa. You know, in South America, the Most High is seeing all these altars in in captivity. You see, verse twenty, and it shall be for a sign. And for a witness unto Yahweh, power of hosts in the land of Egypt, for they shall cry unto Yahweh, and that's what we're doing every week, week in and week out. We are crying unto the Most High. We need salvation. b a b u k s h a b a b u k s h a b a b u k s h a Get us out of this hellhole. Get us out of this situation. Get us out of the the grip the the, the grip of this madman. You know, Esau, the so-called white man. That's turning everything upside down, and that, that is that is. You know, putting hell upon us. For they shall cry unto Yahweh because of the oppressors, and yeah, because Esau he is the head oppressor, but all these other nations also. You know, they don't ask us how we are doing. They don't want to help us. They know who we are, but they are, 
licking our wounds, they are also enjoying the benefits of having us in, in uh, subjection and in derision. You see? And he shall send them a savior and a great one, and he shall deliver them. So the Most High is going to hear our prayers. The Most High is going to hear us. You see? Let's go back to Zechariah. Zechariah 10, verse 7. And they of Ephraim, you see, now he speaks about Ephraim, but um, the first above it, it was Joseph was mentioned. So those two are synonymous and interchangeable. And they of Ephraim shall be like a mighty man, and their heart shall rejoice as though wine, so like as true wine, yea, their children shall see it and be glad. Their heart shall rejoice in Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. I will hiss for them and gather them, for I have redeemed them, and they shall get shall increase as they have increased. God, so Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, he's going to be fighting with us, he's going to gather us, and we are going to increase, you know. Um like the scripture also says, you know, uh a small one is going to become a, a whole nation, roughly paraphrasing. So this this chapter is not in a chronological uh, order. So it, it jumps up and down, you know, back and forth in, in uh, history because this is a future prophecy that still needs to come to pass. But then we are going to go to uh, verse 9. And I will sow them among the people and they shall remember me in far countries. And that is what's happening right now. You see, so... Um, it went into the future, this chapter, and now it came back because the Most High, He did sow us among the nations. We are just, uh, spread around among the Gentiles in far countries. Like I was explaining, we are all across the Americas. We are all across Europe, all across uh, Africa. So we are among these people, among these far countries. And they shall live with their children and turn again. You see? And that's what we're doing right now. The ones that received this truth and now are getting children, we are teaching them the right way how to serve Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. You know, we are uh, giving them the correct doctrine. We are not letting them defile themselves with unclean things. You know, verse 10, I will bring them again also out of the land of Egypt, which uh, that means captivity, and gather them out of Assyria, which also stands for captivity, and I will bring them into the land of Gilead and Lebanon, and place shall not be found for them. So we are going to be taken out of these places of captivity that we're in, and we are going to be placed in Israel. Because if you go into that word, Lebanon, that stands for pure, purity, whiteness, gone. Uh, in the Lashwan Kordash is Laban, Laban, uh, Laban 1, you see? The outline of the book he uses says whiteness, which stands for purity. get a quick precept in the book of Baruch that jumped in my mind speaking about captivity Baruch 2 verse 32 and they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think upon my name and that's exactly this time period that we're living in right now and what we are doing we are in the land of our captivity and thinking and praising the names Yahweh, Bahasha, Wa Yahweh Shai, you know. And also, let me see real quick in the book of Joel. Find it in my 
Bible. Let me just look for it. If I find it, then I'm gonna post it in this uh, in the comment section. But let me go on. This is uh, Zechariah 10, verse 11. And he shall pass through the sea with affliction, and shall smite the waves in the sea, and all the depths of the river shall dry up. Because that's what you can read about in uh, Habakkuk 3, when the Most High's presence is going to be felt here upon earth when he's coming with those uh, chariots, and everything is gonna shake, everything is going to quake, and the just like how the time of the exodus great exodus coming out of egypt the the waters they stood up straight you know because of the presence of the most high because the most high did that same same way also when the chariots are going to come back the the depths of the sea is going to be seen you know the the waves are going to roar the wave is going to rebuke the sea is going to rebuke the waves so all these things is going to happen simultaneously and the pride of Assyria shall be brought down and the scepter of Egypt shall depart away and the pride of Assyria is the same like the pride that Esau has right now you know the most high hates a prideful look and, and uh, Esau he is a very proud man so that pride that pump is going to be brought low you know, and the scepter of Egypt shall depart, and the scepter that represents rulership. So the rulership of Esau is going to depart away. Let's go to the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 14, verse, verse 4. That thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon, which is Esau, because Esau is now the king of modern day Babylon, Babylon the Great, and say, How had the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. So the Most High is going to uh, um, shrink him down to shy, size, man. Yahweh had broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. You see? So the Most High is going to break the scepter take the rulership back out of this man's hand you see let me go to the last precept which is in uh, Joel Joel 3 verse 19 and it says Egypt shall be a desolation and Edom shall be a desolate wilderness for the violence against the children of Judah because they have shed innocent blood in their land you see? So, the Most High, he's going to shrink Esau down to size. He's going to lay that place, uh, he's going to lay that place waste. It's going to be desolate, you know? It's going to be a desert, and only uh, um, wild beasts and, 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 you know, dragons are going to dwell there. It's not going to be inhabited anymore, that uh, land of America, North America, you know? Because it's going to be laid waste through these intercontinental ballistic missiles because of the shedding of innocent blood what he did because the scripture says <clears throat> a land cannot be cleansed only by shedding the blood of the man that shed the blood on that land you see so the most high said it these are the the most just laws these are the righteous laws of the most high so he is going to make do he is going to you know, establish what needs to be established for that place to be cleansed. So yeah, man. Here are the This video is edifying, and I want to say Kalhalayim la Yahweh, Basham Yahushai, Basham Rekha Kudash, Shalom Akim.